Welcome, everyone. We're so happy you're here today with so many cancellations going on these days. We did not want to cancel our lessons and carols. It's a wonderful opportunity to bring the scripture together and to reflect on salvation history. If you did not get a pink uh, song sheet when you came in, they're on the table in back of church. Uh, you'll need that to sing along with some of the hymns that we will be sharing for the service today. Father Matt also said we need to light the candles to St. Joseph as we have now the year of St. Joseph. We look and pray through his intercession as he was the protector of the Holy Family. May he watch over and protect us. We gather today to recall the mystery of our redemption. Though sin drew us away from God, God never stopped loving us. The prophets told of the coming of a Messiah who would initiate a reign of justice and peace. This promise was fulfilled in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Let us now reflect with joy on this wondrous mystery as we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, open our hearts and our minds to the truths revealed in your living word. Help us to understand your plan for humanity and the salvation that you offer us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Make us grateful for his coming and enable us by your spirit to find joy and peace in him. We make this prayer in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was no field shrub on earth and no grass of the field had sprouted. For the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the soil. But a stream was welling up out of the earth and was watering all the surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and he placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow. They were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and bad. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave the man this order. You are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and bad. From that tree, you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die.
God, our Creator, we give you thanks for the wonderful gift of life with all its challenges and opportunities. May we not focus on the things that we have made, but always see you as the source of all life and the giver of every good gift who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat of it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is bad. The woman saw that the tree was good for food pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. The Lord God then called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat.
O God, who sent your only begotten Son into this world to free the human race from its ancient enslavement, bestow on those who devoutly await him the grace of your compassion from on high, that we may receive the gift of true freedom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. But a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall be judged, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and a leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox, and the baby shall play by the cobra's den and the child shall lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no more harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea.
Almighty God, may we be ever watchful for the coming of your only begotten Son, that as the author of our salvation himself has taught us, we may hasten, alert, and with lighted lamps to meet him when he comes, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all mankind shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care.
Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit.
O God, who raised up John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joy and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God.
O God, creator and redeemer of human nature, who willed that your word should take flesh in an ever-virgin womb, look with favor on our prayer that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinus was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what they had been told by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart.
Son of God, born in a stable, laid in a manger. You came to us in a most unexpected way. Open our eyes to see you in the ordinary events of life. Fill us with your love and the gifts of your spirit. May the radiance of your light dispel the darkness of fear and doubt and lead us home to be with you forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way.
O God, who revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may always follow Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and use the gifts you have given us to further the building of your kingdom on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. He came to be, through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory of God's of God, uh, glory as of the Father's only Son, full of song, and truth.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we are bathed in the new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith, which illumines our minds, may we allow this same light to shine in our lives through all our deeds. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age.
Lord our God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your presence. Pour out your blessings upon us and keep us always close to your living word that we may share with you the promised gift of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This year we had the cooperation of all three of our parishes in our pastoral region in our lessons and carols. We had lectors from each of our three parishes and the musicians from all three of our parishes pulling together their efforts. I want to thank our lectors and Brad and Michelle and Krista for working with our readings and pulling forth music that is so beautiful and appropriate. I want to thank them, thank our lectors for all their work. Let us stand and pray. Gathered as children of God, let us open our hearts and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, source of hope, when the powers of evil had done their worst, crucifying your son and burying him in death, you raised him to life again. Fulfilling your promises in scripture through your covenant of love, we thank you for sharing with us the gift of resurrection life. By your spirit, change us into the likeness of your son and make us witnesses in our own time to your plan of salvation. We make this prayer and ask your blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the Lord and have a blessed rest of Advent and Christmas season, everyone. Thanks, Thanks.